Moments ago, Italy's civil protection placed Mount Etna under code red, after Europe's most restless volcano exploded in an eruption on a scale authorities have not faced in years. The blast triggered emergency alerts and a sweeping five-kilometer exclusion zone. No warning. A sudden surge of lava fountains reaching 1,500 meters high and swirling ash are now halting flights and threatening villages. Entire communities are bracing for evacuation orders that could come at any second. What makes this eruption so different and how are officials preparing for the worst? The answer starts now. All persons are hereby ordered to evacuate and remain outside the declared hazard zone until further notice. With these words, Italy's civil protection delivered its highest level directive and invoked emergency powers reserved for the gravest volcanic threats. The code red status now in effect carries the full force of national law and activates protocols designed for immediate, non-negotiable compliance. The exclusion boundary, drawn at a strict five kilometer radius from Etna's summit, creates a legal perimeter enforced by local authorities and national police. Entry is forbidden to everyone except certified emergency personnel and scientific teams operating under direct government mandate. Violators face prosecution and substantial fines as outlined in the Civil Protection Standing Disaster Regulations. This order is not advisory. It is a binding measure under Article 7 of Italy's National Emergency Management Code. Triggered when volcanic activity reaches a level defined as imminent and severe threat to life, infrastructure, and the environment. The language is explicit. All non-essential movement within the exclusion zone must cease immediately, and checkpoints are being established on all access roads leading toward the summit. For residents and visitors, the message is clear. Leave at once or risk both legal penalty and personal danger. The Code Red Alert also requires the immediate suspension of all tourism operations on Etna, including guided hikes, ski excursions, and summit cableway services. Local businesses operating within the hazard zone have been instructed to close, and property owners are barred from returning until the area is declared safe by authorities. These restrictions are a matter of public safety and also a legal shield, allowing emergency services to operate without obstruction as they assess risks and coordinate further response. By issuing this directive, civil protection has made the stakes unmistakable. The eruption is now classified as a crisis event, and every measure, no matter how disruptive, serves one purpose, to protect lives. The perimeter stands as a line between danger and safety, enforced by law and backed by the full weight of the Italian state. For anyone living near Mount Etna or planning to travel in the region, immediate safety steps are not optional, they are essential. The first priority is to evacuate immediately from the exclusion zone without delay. Do not attempt to collect belongings or return for pets or valuables. Roads can close at short notice and police checkpoints are active on every approach to the summit. If you are outside the hazard area, avoid all non-essential travel toward Etna and stay clear of routes that authorities have marked as restricted. Inside your home, minimize exposure to volcanic ash. Shut all windows and doors tightly. Seal gaps with towels or tape, especially around vents and under doors. Turn off air conditioning and ventilation systems that draw air from outside. If you must go outdoors, wear a mask rated for fine particles, or at minimum use a damp cloth over your nose and mouth. Protective eyewear can help prevent irritation from ash. Do not drive unless absolutely necessary. Ash can reduce visibility and clog engines, putting you at risk of breakdowns in unsafe areas. Prepare an emergency kit with bottled water, non-perishable food, a flashlight, spare batteries, and basic first aid supplies. Keep your mobile phone charged and have a portable power bank ready. Store important documents in a waterproof bag. For families with children or elderly members, arrange a safe meeting point outside the exclusion zone and establish a communication plan in case you become separated. Stay informed through official channels. 
the Italian Civil Protection website and the real-time monitoring portals of INGV provide the most current updates. Local radio stations and emergency text alerts will broadcast evacuation instructions or changes in hazard status. Do not rely on social media rumors or unofficial sources because misinformation can quickly spread during a crisis. For urgent questions, use the dedicated civil protection hotline or the municipality emergency contact numbers, which are posted online and at major roadblocks. Follow these five steps. Evacuate immediately, seal your home, prepare an emergency kit, avoid unnecessary travel and monitor official updates. Doing so reduces your risk and helps emergency teams do their work. In a volcanic crisis, every minute counts. Compliance with these procedures is the surest way to safeguard yourself and your community. Lava bursts from Mount Etna's summit, painting the night with columns of fire that rise hundreds of meters above the crater rim. Early field estimates put the tallest fountains at nearly 400 meters, higher than the Eiffel Tower, and still well within the upper range of Etna's more vigorous paroxysms. Each eruption pulse hurls molten rock and incandescent fragments skyward, scattering them across the upper slopes in glowing arcs. Down the eastern flank, a steady river of lava pushes into the Valle del Bove, carving a new path over old flows. The advance is relentless, with the leading edge moving at a pace that forces any lingering wildlife to flee. The air is thick with fine ash, carried westward by shifting winds. Plumes stretch several kilometers into the sky, their dark shadows drifting over villages and farmland on the lower slopes. Meteorological models track the ash as it spreads, noting concentrations high enough to coat rooftops and fields in a thin, gritty layer. In the upper atmosphere, the plume's altitude threatens to intersect flight paths, triggering advisories for pilots and air traffic controllers. While no full closure has been enforced, delays ripple through Sicily's airspace as airlines reroute to avoid the densest clouds. Seismic sensors positioned around the summit register continuous tremor, their graphs spiking with each explosive burst. Thermal cameras capture the intense heat radiating from the main vent, while satellite images reveal the extent of the active flow, now stretching more than one kilometer from its source. Despite the spectacle, the eruption's impact remains largely contained within natural barriers. With the Valle del Bove acting as a channel that directs lava away from inhabited areas, the physical scale of the eruption is substantial, but not unprecedented for Etna. Fountains of this height and ash plumes of this reach have been documented in previous years, most notably during the paroxysms of 2021. Yet, every new episode brings a fresh reminder of the volcano's unpredictable power and the need for constant vigilance. For those living in Etna's shadow, the visible force on display tonight is both a warning and a familiar part of life on Europe's most active volcano. Long before the eruption broke the surface, a web of sensors around Mount Etna began to register subtle signals deep within the Earth. 48 hours ahead of the first lava burst, seismic stations picked up a band of tremors that did not match the usual shallow signatures seen in past paroxysms. The initial analysis pointed to vibrations traveling from far beneath the volcano, depths that had rarely been implicated in Etna's recent activity. These tremors, captured on high-resolution seismograms, hinted at processes unfolding well below the standard magma reservoirs raising questions among volcanologists at the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV. Responding to these early warnings, INGV summit teams began rolling out additional equipment at strategic points around the crater rim and upper slopes, portable seismic arrays, each tuned to detect faint low frequency waves, were set up alongside gas monitoring stations designed to sample volcanic emissions in real time. The goal was to map the movement of magma and volatile gases with greater precision, hoping to catch any escalation before it reached the surface. 
Each sensor fed its data directly to the observatory's crisis room, where scientists worked around the clock to interpret the evolving signals. As the eruption began, field geologists moved quickly, quickly to collect samples from the advancing lava. Early observations described an unusual combination of viscosity and color. The flows appeared thicker and moved more sluggishly than the runny basaltic streams typical of Etna's summit eruptions. In certain light, the fresh lava displayed a striking brightness, suggesting a high content of glass or crystals. Features that could indicate a deeper or less degassed magma source. These field notes were logged and tagged for rapid laboratory analysis, with thin sections and geochemical scans scheduled to follow within days. The deployment of new instruments and the collection of fresh lava samples marked a shift from routine observation to focused investigation. For the INGV teams, the stakes were clear. If the signals and lava properties pointed to a new behavior in Etna's plumbing, the implications could extend far beyond the current outbreak. Every data stream, seismic, chemical, visual, became a piece of evidence in the urgent effort to understand what was happening beneath Sicily's most restless mountain. At the edge of the exclusion zone, makeshift shelters fill quickly as families arrive with little more than what they can carry. Municipal gyms and school halls in Zafirana, Etnea, and Nicolosi convert overnight into emergency accommodations, each site prepared to take in hundreds. Civil protection volunteers, working alongside local staff, register arrivals and direct them to cots lined up in neat rows. Supplies such as blankets, bottled water, bread, and canned food arrive by the truckload. The logistics are deliberate. Every shelter is assigned a maximum capacity with overflow plans ready if needed. Mayor Salvatore Russo stands near the entrance of the Zafirana gym, his phone in constant motion between calls. For him, the priority is clear. No one will be left outside and no one will be overlooked. He checks on the arrivals, pausing to talk with a family of four who left their home in haste. Their youngest, a girl of seven, clutches a stuffed animal her mother reassuring her that this is only for a night or two. The father, still in work clothes, tries to mask his worry as he asks about updates from the mountain. Each family receives a packet with instructions, emergency contacts, and a map showing where to find medical help or counseling. Volunteers keep lists of dietary needs and medications, making sure nothing is missed. Children gather in corners with donated coloring books, while older residents cluster around radios waiting for news. Despite the disruption, a sense of order takes hold. The shelters are not home, but for now they are a safe haven, built on the efforts of a community determined to protect its own. Air travel across eastern Sicily faces immediate disruption. Catania Airport, the region's busiest hub, has issued a NOTAM, a notice to air missions, halting all takeoffs and landings as volcanic ash drifts through controlled airspace. The airport authority confirms that runways remain open for emergency services, but passenger flights are suspended until further notice. Arriving planes are being diverted to Palermo and Reggio Calabria, leaving hundreds of travelers stranded in terminals or rerouted mid-journey. Airlines are scrambling to rebook connections, while airport staff distribute bottled water and blankets to those waiting out the closure. On the ground, the Circumetnia Railway which circles the lower slopes of Etna, is operating on a limited schedule. Ash accumulation on tracks and shifting advisories from civil engineers force periodic shutdowns, especially on segments nearest the volcano's eastern and southern flanks. Rail operators coordinate with municipal authorities to monitor conditions, ready to halt service at short notice if tremor readings spike or ashfall intensifies. Key roads leading toward Nicolosi, Zafirana Etnea, and Lingua Glossa remain open for evacuation and emergency transit, but police checkpoints restrict non-essential traffic. Road maintenance crews stand by to clear ash and debris, prioritizing routes designated for ambulances and supply convoys. Volunteer groups and municipal teams have mobilized across affected towns. 
local Red Cross branches set up information desks at transit stations, guiding displaced travelers and residents toward shelters or safe exits. A representative from the Catania Airport Authority said their priority is safety and that they are working closely with civil protection and air traffic control to resume operations as soon as conditions allow. For now, mobility across Sicily hinges on the volcano's next move, with infrastructure teams and volunteers bracing for further developments. Centuries of eruptions have shaped both the land and the memory of those living near Mount Etna. The eruption of 1669 stands as the most devastating in the volcano's recorded history. Over the course of five weeks, a curtain of lava advanced nearly 15 miles, swallowing 10 villages and reaching the fortified walls of Catania. Historical maps, when overlaid with today's hazard zones, reveal the true scale of that disaster. Lava flows covered more than 40 square kilometers, forcing thousands from their homes and altering the city's boundaries forever. Even now, remnants of those flows are visible beneath modern streets. By contrast, the paroxysms of 2021 offer a more recent benchmark. That year, Etna produced a rapid sequence of over 50 explosive episodes in just three months. Ash clouds soared higher than 10 kilometers, disrupting air travel and blanketing towns in gray. Catania Airport faced repeated closures, and flights were diverted across the Mediterranean. Yet despite the intensity, the affected area remained largely confined to the summit and the Valle del Bove, sparing urban centers from the devastation seen in 1669. Comparing these events to the present, the differences become clear. Current activity, while dramatic, has not approached the reach or destruction of the 1669 eruption, nor has it matched the relentless pace of the 2021 paroxysms. Advances in monitoring and emergency planning now provide a layer of protection unimaginable in earlier centuries. Each eruption adds another chapter to Etna's story, but the lessons of the past continue to inform every response today. Volcanologists monitoring Mount Etna stress that the path ahead is anything but uncertain. While the eruption's current behavior fits within the range of the volcano's recent activity, the possibility of a prolonged phase remains on the table. Dr. Stefano Branca, a senior scientist at INGV, explains that Etna's eruptive cycles can shift quickly, sometimes winding down within days, other times persisting for weeks or even months. The challenge lies in the volcano's unpredictable internal rhythms. Patterns observed in the past offer guidance, but each episode writes its own rules. Contingency planning now takes center stage for authorities and residents alike. Emergency teams maintain a rotating presence at key monitoring stations, ready to adapt as new data arrives. Civil protection officials continue to coordinate with local municipalities, updating evacuation and supply plans in case conditions escalate. For those living near the volcano, the advice is clear. Stay alert, keep emergency kits accessible, and pay close attention to official updates. Unexpected changes in tremor levels, gas emissions, or lava flow direction could prompt new safety measures with little warning. The duration of this eruptive phase cannot be predicted with precision. Volcanologists caution against assuming a quick resolution, pointing to Etna's history of both brief outbursts and drawn-out activity. Official channels, including the INGV real-time monitoring portal and civil protection bulletins, remain the most reliable sources for updates. In the face of uncertainty, practical vigilance is the best defense. The coming days and weeks will demand patience, flexibility, and trust in the expertise guiding Sicily through yet another chapter in Etna's restless story. Mount Etna reminds us that Europe's most active volcano is never truly at rest. With each surge, it tests the limits of science, safety, and adaptation for the communities below. Today, real-time monitoring is the only certainty. The next eruption's scale remains unknowable. Volcanic risk is not distant history. It is a living presence. 
What would you do if the warning came tomorrow?